It's now time for Mark Hankins, Faith for Every Nation. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. So we're talking about generous, amen, and then going a step beyond your definition of generous and becoming extravagantly generous. Now, here's the way the Lord said it to me. He said, your extravagant generosity is a reflection of God's extravagant generosity. Or your extravagant generosity will take you beyond your comfort zone to where now your faith and confidence is in God. That God's the source of your supply. Actually, when David gave that way, it says they got so happy after giving that kind of money in First Chronicles 20, they got so happy, it says they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. Amen. And David said, Lord, keep this forever in the memory of your people, of this event where people gave generously. And David said, and God, I want to thank you, but who am I that you have enabled me to give this way? I mean, you know that God will bless you and he will enable you to give beyond your wildest dreams. And you'll say, thank you, Lord, for empowering me to be generous and to be a blessing. Matter of fact, the Bible says God loves. God loves, or Amplified said, prizes above other things. Will not abandon or do without a cheerful, generous, hilarious giver whose heart is in his giving. One translation says, a laughing giver. Come on, if you can't get happy when you give, I say, well, Lord, how come more people don't get happy during the offerings? Come on, that's usually the quietest part of the service. When you're talking about tithing or giving, you know, everybody gets quiet, becomes more like a funeral, right? And people are like, could you get this over with, buddy? Now, So I said, Lord, how come people don't actually get happier when it's time to tithe and time to give? It's just such a quiet time. But in the scriptures, you'll find people getting extremely happy. I said, why don't people get happier? He said to me this way. He said, because most people just give enough to irritate themselves. (laughs) All right, here, I hope that helps you out, buddy. (laughs) Are most people... Give with a, more of a consciousness of their giving than a consciousness of God's generosity. Amen. Or their giving, thinking, subtraction, when God said, I will multiply your seed zone. So you're giving with a sense of loss, and God's saying you should give with a sense of increase and the provision and the blessing of the Lord. The Lord said to me, literally, you can give your way into abundance. Amen. Turn to Proverbs 11, 24 and 25. Proverbs 11, 24 and 25. What's it say there? King James says, there is a scattereth and yet increases. There is that withholdeth more than his meat, but it tends to poverty. The next verse says, verse 25, the liberal soul, the word there is the word generous. The generous soul shall be made fat. The word fat means be made rich, abundantly provided for. The generous person shall be made what? Rich, abundantly provided for. And he that waters others shall be watered himself. Actually, I love what the Scripture says in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 10. It says, God is not unrighteous to forget your labor for the body of Christ. What does that mean? Other people may forget what you did and how you served and how you gave, but God never forgets. And with, with God, my dad always said, with God, payday is not always on Friday. All right, let's try that again. I said, with God, payday is not always on Friday. Come on, the harvest ain't ever Friday. 
But God said, I have not forgotten, and there's a harvest of blessing that will come to you at the most unusual time, and it will come in so many different ways. Go ahead and laugh about that. All right, now, go back to Proverbs eleven twenty four. There is that scattereth and increases. Hmm. There is that withholds more than is meat. What does that mean? More than is appropriate. So it doesn't mean that they didn't give anything. It just means they were not generous. Thank you for your enthusiasm. <laughs> there is that withholdeth more than is appropriate, and it tends to poverty or lack. So I studied that scripture for years, and I said, Lord, uh, I don't really understand that. So what you trying to say? What you trying to say? Well, here's the way he said it to me. He said, you would think that if you withhold money, you would have more money. He said, but if you hold on too tight, you'll have less money. All right, let's try this out over here. Or you can say it this way. Lack does not come from money you don't have. It comes from money you do have you shouldn't have. All right, well, everybody say wasabi. <laughs> now, <laughs> the reason I say wasabi is, you know, uh, years ago I was, uh, 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 they asked me to eat this, uh, you know, Japanese or Chinese, you know, uh, sushi or something. And so then they got the green stuff, you know, the soy sauce. And they said, now that green stuff is called wasabi, so, so be careful about the green stuff. Well, it's my first time, so I said, <laughs> you know, I'm from Texas. You know, we eat jalapenos. You think I'm afraid of the green stuff. No, I'm not afraid of it, actually. Give me some more of it. So, boy, they put a bunch in there, and, boy, I took my sushi and dipped it in that. Boom, I got a big, big old lump of that green stuff. Boy, I put it in my mouth. And in about three seconds. I overdosed on wasabi. In about three <laughs> seconds, that wasabi hit me in the head. I felt like my brain was going to explode. <laughs> I went, ha! Ah! Now, I don't know how it knows to go to your head. You know, why don't it go to your elbow or your knee or something? You start going, ah! No, it goes right to your head. Wasabi. Well, so everybody was laughing. But I was meditating on the Word of God, which is God's thoughts. While I was meditating on the Word of God, thinking like God is not what most people do. You won't have to go far to find somebody that thinks like you. <laughs> we better keep moving here. I said, you won't have to go far to find somebody that thinks like you. But to find somebody that thinks like God... Come on, God tells us straight up, I don't think like people. He said, my thoughts are higher. My ways are higher. He said, but the word is my thoughts and my ways. It'll saturate into you. Right? So God's thoughts and God's ways. But you don't think in God's thoughts. Totally different from the way you think. Sometimes just thinking a couple of his thoughts, you're like. Hold it. I'm about to pass out. Some of you I was thinking a couple of God's thoughts. Man, it'll hit the stalactites that's been in your brain for years. Come on. In other words, God's thinking is different than our thinking. Right? So God don't think like people. So I was meditating on the Word of God. While I was meditating on it, I just felt the living Word of God come up on the inside of me and hit me in the brain and challenge my thinking. And I went, wasabi. <laughs> all right, all right, let's keep moving here. So in other words, when you meditate on the Word of God, it's alive. And it's God's thoughts, and it'll literally challenge the way you think. Yes, 
So I was thinking on this scripture, and I was going, now, there is that scatter and increases. There is that holds on to their money and actually decreases. I said, now, how does that work? Because I thought if I held on to my money, I'd have more money. And city says if you hold on too tight, you'll have less money. All right, let's look at it this way. Another translation says, one gives away and gets richer. Another keeps what he should give and is poorer. In other words, generosity is a way that God brings increase. You can literally give your way out. Come on, your tithing and your giving will literally open up supernatural resources in your life. Amen. Amen? God is impressed with givers. God's impressed with generosity. Amen? One of my favorite stories is um, in Acts chapter 10, Cornelius. Acts chapter 10. Here's what it says. There's a certain man. Come on, apparently he's a rich man. And Cornelius has said his prayers and his giving came up before God. And Cornelius is not even a Christian. Cornelius is, you know, he loves God, but he's not a Christian. He doesn't know the Lord. But he's hungry for God, and he loves to give, and it says he gave much. And it says his generosity got God's attention. Isn't that interesting? God even pays attention to heathens giving. Well, if he pays attention to the non-Christians giving. Matter of fact, if you study the four Gospels, the only thing Jesus mentioned in church was it said he stood by the offering and made comments. And people were giving. Jesus went, mm. I know how much you spend on your toenails and your fingernails. <laughs> so that's not that impressive. Mm. Somebody else gave it like, eh, you spent more than that at Disney World. Mm. You gave Mickey Mouse more than you gave to the kingdom of God. <laughs> I'm going to carry a big mirror so some of y'all can see what you look like when I'm talking about the joy. <laughs> You spent more than that on your last deer rifle. <laughs> you said, why are you saying that? That's what the Lord said to me. I went, oh, you're getting personal. <laughs> and so Jesus stood by the offering and watched how people gave. And if he never changes... I believe he still watches. And I believe he still makes comments. He probably rolls his eyes a couple times, looked at a couple angels and goes. <laughs> so it says that people put in much. Come on, some of the rich people put in much. But he said there was a certain woman that gave of her living. Even though she had less ability than the rich people, she actually outgave everybody. Did you know that generosity can happen in anybody? You don't have to be a rich person to be generous. You don't have to be a rich person to even get God's attention in your generosity. Come on. You can literally outgive people that have more resources than you. Thank you. I saw another nod. Listen, I said, you can literally outgive. In other words, anybody can qualify for generosity. So I'm not just talking about a certain class of people. Any person can qualify for generosity. Amen? And so Jesus stood by the offering, watched people giving, right? And he's still watching. So when it comes to generosity, I asked the Lord one time. I said, Lord, you said in 2 Corinthians that if I sow sparingly, I reap sparingly. If I sow generously, I reap generously. I'm interested in the generous harvest. <laughs> Sorry, I entertained myself while I'm preaching here. 
It's bad if you're a preacher and you actually bore yourself. So <laughs> you got to do that every day. So <laughs> 2 Corinthians 9, verse 6, put that up there real quickly here. 2 Corinthians 9, 6, he says, he that soweth sparingly shall reap what? Sparingly. He that sows generously shall what? Reap generously. Right? Bountifully, generously. So here's the way the Lord said it to me. He said, harvest never gets confused. In other words, you don't have to worry about sowing sparingly and reaping generously. Neither do you have to worry about sowing generously and reaping sparingly. In other words, your seed is labeled sparing or generous. And it has a return address on it. In other words, your harvest will come to you. That means nobody can steal your harvest. Like you hear somebody else's miracle and you're like, I think that went to the wrong address. No, your seed... I said, your seed is guaranteed, man. Yeah. So if you're so sparingly, come on. Sometimes people say, well, I hadn't got my harvest yet. I said, well, maybe you have. <laughs> you just didn't recognize it. Right. I'm so sorry. I see some of you like, are you talking to me? <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Sometimes after church, I want to say, please forgive me. I had to talk to you like that, but it's in the Bible. So... If you sow sparingly, he said that sparing harvest, in other words, here's the way the Lord said it to me. He said, if your giving don't affect you much, neither will your harvest affect you much. In other words, if your giving don't get your attention. So I asked the Lord one time, I said, how will I know when I'm generous? But I said, how am I going to know? Well, I'm generous because generous is different amounts to different people. Come on. And all of us, we like to put generous on everything. Generous, generous, generous. Listen, you ain't in charge of labeling. There is a God and you ain't him. In other words, God's the one that determines when we are generous. All right. So in general, I said, Lord, how will I know when, <laughs> how will I know when I'm generous? And here's the way the Lord said to me. He said, you'll know. I said, well, how will I know? He said, because when you're generous is when you give and think about it months later. Months later, you're going, whew, there better be a God. Months later, you're getting the Bible out. Where's those scriptures on tithing and giving? I got to get those scriptures out right now. In other words, when you're generous, you get outside of your comfort zone, and literally, you are believing God and trusting God that he watches his word to perform it. So when you're generous, he said, if you sow generously, you will reap what? Generously. Amen? And so we start off, first of all, being tithers. Tithing, the word tithe, means a tenth, 10%. I know some of y'all tried to negotiate that. A tenth, 10%. You say, well, I just wanted to put God on salary. Listen, <laughs> if you put God on salary, that means he works for you. If you put him on percentage, it means you're partners. <laughs> that means it is to his advantage for you to increase. But the tithe is not the end. It really is only the beginning of generosity. It's only the beginning. So I'm going to read this. I got this out of a book several years ago, and this is some of the noted tithers in America. Noted tithers in America. Just a, a small list here. J.C. Penney, owner of the J.C. Penney, J. Penney stores, was a tither. Mr. Kraft of Kraft Cheese Company started tithing when he was pushing a milk and cheese cart on the streets of New York. A.A. A. Hyde, owner of Mentholatum, a tither. Mr. Hines of 57 Varieties, a tither. Mr. Kerr of the Kerr Jar Co Company, a tither. Mr. Proctor, Proctor & Gamble of Ivory Soap, it was a tither. Mr. Hershey of Hershey's Chocolate. Did your mouth start watering? He was a tither. 
Mr. Jarman, shoe manufacturer, a tither. Mr. Kellogg of cornflakes, a tither. Mr. Curl of Quaker Oats, a tither. William Colgate of Colgate Shaving Cream, Toothpaste, etc. He started tithing when he was a young man, and he tithed one-tenth, 10%. Then he went to two-tenths, 20%. Then he went to three-tenths, 30%. Then he went to four-tenths, 40%. Then he went to five-tenths and gave 50%. And then he saved enough money to live on and gave God all of his income. Everybody go, wasabi. All right. John D. Rockefeller. John D. Rockefeller, financial wizard of the world, began tithing at the age of eight years old. He said, I've tithed on every dollar that God entrusted to me. I want to say to you that I could have never tithed on my first million if I had not tithed on my first salary of $1.50 a week. He became one of the richest men in the world. R.G. Letourneau. Born again believer, manufacturer of earth movers and all kinds of heavy equipment, accepted Christ and he decided to go into business with God. Everything went really good for a few years. Then it says he said he got off track. He started getting behind financially and so he told God, I, can, I cannot afford to tithe. So he said, just give me a chance to build the business and then I'll tithe. He said, I got off track. He said, I about went bankrupt. He said, and then I talked to God. And he said, God said, it takes faith to tithe on the front side, not wait and give God what's left over. So he gave his first fruits to God. And he says, and he kept doing that. And then he says here, R.G. Letourneau became a very wealthy man in heaven as well as on earth, he actually gave 90% of his income and lived on 10%. You're watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. Galatians 6.10 says, As we therefore have opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto those that are of the household of faith. The good news is anyone can participate in God's generosity plan. We have to look for the opportunities he gives us to sow our seed. The generosity of a believer affects how they receive the word. When you give, it not only reflects your heart, it also affects your heart. In his book, How to Receive God's Extravagant Generosity, Mark Hankins shares how your spiritual breakthrough may be just as connected to your giving as well as your praying. God will do things for you that money can't do when you're a generous giver. As a bonus, you'll also receive the four CD set, How to Receive God's Extravagant Generosity. This teaching will help you understand how God wants everyone to reap the benefits of his plan for generosity. In this four CD set, Pastor Mark shares four powerful teachings, God's extravagant generosity, a whopper of a harvest, extreme giving, abundant living, and generosity the way to increase. Discover how with God, over and above giving will produce over and above living. Get the book and CD set today. Your gift of any amount will help Mark and Trina Hankins train believers worldwide. Our vision is for believers to catch the spirit of faith, learn who they are in Christ, and become strengthened by the move of the Holy Spirit. Your love seat will also help us complete our new Mark Hankins Ministries Conference Center. This conference center will help us distribute the word more effectively through conferences and serve as our new television studio. You will receive the book and the four CD set, How to Receive God's Extravagant Generosity for your gift of any amount. You also can download these messages as MP3s in our app for free. For more information, please call 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. Thank you, World Missions partners. Together we can, together we will. I trust you enjoyed the program today. Of course, one of my favorite subjects in the Bible is simply generosity, or we also call it supernatural increase. Because sometimes people think, well, the Bible's just talking about people giving, but really, the Lord said, I'm really talking about your receiving. Because he talks about sowing, and he says, and your generous sowing 
will produce a generous harvest. Well, I was sure interested in that generous harvest. And so I began to study on generosity and giving and supernatural increase. And wow, the things that opened up from the word of God on the possibilities and the promises and even the word that God said that the generous soul shall be abundantly blessed. So I began to study generosity because a lot of times people think they're generous till they run into somebody's generous. Or you could say it this way, God's the most generous or the biggest giver. And actually the Lord said to me, he said, if you'll get addicted to giving, I'll support your habit. Or your sowing will outperform your saving. Or the Lord said to me, uh, I'll do things for you money could never do. There's something about generosity that just opens up the heart of God. God loves a generous, cheerful, happy giver. And there's something about that giving and sowing that God said, I'll multiply your seed zone. And most people are thinking subtraction and God's thinking multiplication. So I encourage you to get this book. I'm telling you, it may, it may look a little bit funny at the beginning, God's extravagant generosity, but I'm telling you, there's something about it. I love the Proverbs 11, 24, the message Bible says, the world of the generous gets larger and larger and the world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. And you get this, it'll tell you how to break certain barriers in your giving and your receiving and how to receive God's best blessing because there is no shortage to God's giving. Come on, sometimes we limit to him and we're not able to receive what he has for us. And the Lord told me that one time and how to open up to receive. So if you'll just simply get this book and we'll go through, it'll teach you how to give, how to sow in expectation, how to get happy about your giving and how to see a harvest, a whopper of a harvest come in so that you'll be a testimony of the grace of God, that God will make all grace abound toward you. Wow, what a promise that God will make all grace abound toward you. You have all sufficiency in all things abound to every good work. Look at this, God's extravagant generosity. So I encourage you to get the book. It'll teach you how to go up to a whole new level of receiving from God and also get the CDs or you can download them online. And I encourage you as you do this, your faith for finances, and you'll see supernatural increase, not through some sort of a gimmick, but simply feeding on the word of God. So I encourage you to get this, and all week long we're talking about God's extravagant generosity. May God richly bless you. The Mark Hankins Ministries app makes it easy for you to watch the latest TV broadcast. Listen to unlimited full sermons by Mark and Trina. Read our daily devotional and stay connected with upcoming events. Download the app today on any smart device. Simply search Mark Hankins Ministries. Start feeding your faith at any time and anywhere. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. For more information on how to build your faith, visit markhankins.org. You can access many free word resources to help you find who you are in Christ. Stay connected with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.